Stop. Don't skip. Because today, on the 20th of February, brace yourselves for a bombshell that's about to drop like never before. There's something absolutely shocking is brewing, all because of a single action that's about to send shockwaves through your world. But here's the deal. If you skip out on this, you might just find yourself shedding tears of regret. Trust me, you don't want to miss out on what's coming, because it's going to be one wild ride. Get ready to be stunned, because the ripple effect of this move is going to leave Jaws on the floor. Stay tuned as we unravel the shocking news and its repercussions together. Before we proceed, kindly confirm your faith in God by replying with yes. Remember, while our lives are shaped by what we receive, the real essence of life is found in what we give. Just a modest $40 donation can provide nourishment for a child for multiple days. Are you ready? Your destiny is hanging in the balance, and the stakes are sky high today. The Supreme Lord has a curious message, one that is meant exclusively for you, and it demands your immediate and undivided attention. This news is not just astonishing, it's life-changing amidst the regular flow of life. You chose something like picking which socks to wear. Who knew that such a time, tiny decision could hold the strings of destiny fast forward, and that simple call is now the entry date to an adventure that's about to untangle the mess of your life. It's a bit of a twist, though, this journey sprouting from what seemed like nothing is your ticket to uncovering all those dreams you've kept tucked away all right. Let's break it down further. Imagine standing at a crossroads, with one path leading to the known comforts of your current life, while the other beckons with the promise of exciting possibilities and untapped potential. Your heart feels torn between the safety of the familiar and the allure of the unknown. It's like being caught in a tug of war between staying in your cozy cocoon and leaping into the thrilling adventure of what could be. Get ready. Because I'm about to reveal something that will completely disrupt your world, all because of a seemingly trivial choice you made previously. This revelation has the power to unravel the intricate tapestry of your destiny, revealing hidden truths and opening doors to new opportunities. So, are you ready to take the plunge and explore the depths of this revelation? If you're up for the challenge, if you're ready to embrace the journey of self-discovery and unlock the mysteries of your existence, then type I'm ready to claim this message, and let's embark on this adventure together. Because life is a complex mosaic, shaped by the choices we make, both big and small, and it's time to unravel the threads that weave our destiny. Think of these choices as the individual threads intricately weaving the beautiful tapestry of our lives. Today, the divine wishes to shed light on one particular thread, a thread hastily woven, an impulsive decision that, though made quietly, has left a significant mark on the expansive canvas of your existence. Are you eager to delve deeper into this remarkable journey? Picture yourself standing at a crucial crossroads, a pivotal moment in your life where uncertainty loomed and you had to make a critical decision. In that fleeting instant, you chose a path. Perhaps without much contemplation, setting forth a chain of events that ultimately guided you to your current place in life. Little did you realize at that time that this seemingly inconsequential choice would emerge as a central motif, a defining thread in the intricate tapestry of your being. Does the prospect of unraveling the hidden mysteries concealed within that pivotal moment intrigue you further? As you journey back to that pivotal moment, Consider the intricate interplay of emotions, pressures, and influences that converged to shape your impulsive decision. Perhaps it was a surge of passion or a wave of uncertainty that propelled you forward. Or maybe external circumstances pushed you to act swiftly without fully contemplating the consequences. Now, under the divine light, take a moment to scrutinize the ripple effects of that decision. How has it woven itself into the tapestry of your life? leaving indelible marks on your relationships, career trajectory, and overall sense of fulfillment. Are you prepared to explore the depths of its impact, both the blessings it may have bestowed and the challenges it may have brought? The Supreme Lord invites you to embark on this introspective journey, offering guidance and illumination as you navigate the intricacies of your past choices and their enduring effects on your present reality. Reflecting on the aftermath of your impulsive decision, 
It's crucial to acknowledge both the positive and negative outcomes that have unfolded. While some may perceive it solely as a misstep or regrettable choice, there's wisdom to be gleaned from every experience. Despite any challenges or setbacks that may have arisen, have you uncovered hidden strengths, talents, or newfound perspectives that have enriched your journey? The Supreme Lord encourages you to embrace the growth that has stemmed from this pivotal moment, recognizing that even in the face of adversity, there are valuable lessons to be learned and blessings to be found. Are you prepared to open your heart and mind to the transformative power of self-discovery and personal evolution? It's time to embrace the journey of growth and learning that awaits, guided by the divine wisdom that illuminates your path. Today, I encourage you to embrace a spirit of generosity that flows freely from within you. Allow the love of the Supreme Lord to permeate your being and extend outward to those around you. Open yourself up to the Divine Presence within, allowing it to guide your actions and interactions with others. The Father implores you to embody love without conditions, to give abundantly, and to forgive others unreservedly. Let your acts of love and forgiveness be so profound that they challenge the narrow-mindedness of those who have grown cold in their affection. Reach out to those who may not deserve it or who have not reciprocated your love, and let your testimony be one of unwavering compassion and grace. Embrace the transformative power of love, for it has the ability to transcend boundaries and touch the hearts of even the most hardened souls. Today, make a conscious decision to live out this message, allowing the love of the Supreme Lord to flow through you and shine brightly for all to see. Today, the Father speaks to us about the audacity of love. He reminds us that despite any restrictions or constraints placed upon us by others, love knows no bounds. It has a nature of breaking free from limitations and reaching out to every level of relationship and expectation. Love operates in a spiritual realm of its own, untouched by failure or defeat. The Father encourages us to channel all our hopes, dreams, and desires into the landscape of love, for it is there that faith finds its fullest expression. Like a gentle breeze, His message prompts us to unlock the reservoir of generosity within us, knowing that His divine essence resides within, eager to pour out into the world. It's a call to love without conditions, to give without holding back. Our love transcends reason, extending beyond conditions or expectations. This limitless love might perplex those with closed hearts. Yet, the Father urges us to offer our love to even the undeserving, those who may not have returned our affections. Our testimony toward them is bold. I will love you, and nothing can hinder it. This declaration echoes the audacity of love itself, as the Father affirms. Such is the essence of love, according to the Father's teachings. In a world filled with restrictions and limitations, love remains boundless. It transcends the constraints of human relationships and expectations, reaching out even to those deemed least deserving. Love inhabits a spiritual realm untouched by failure or defeat. Thus, we are urged to relocate our hopes, dreams, and deepest desires to the landscape of love. In this sacred space, faith blossoms, giving tangible form to every vision and aspiration. Embedded within the depths of our hearts lies the seed of creation, sowing dreams that transcend the limitations of earthly existence. In this expansive perspective, we uncover love as an inexhaustible reservoir, an eternal spring ever renewing itself. Here, within the vast expanse of love's geography, there are no boundaries, no disappointments, and no defeats. Let's heed the call of the Father, allowing the generosity of our spirits to flow freely, like a river of love, quenching the thirst of those we encounter. In this audacious outpouring of love, we may witness the miraculous, as faith takes root, transforming our dreams and visions into tangible realities. If you're keen on delving deeper into profound insights like these, then heed the words of your prophet as he unveils biblical parables. This disclosure holds the potential to untangle the complex web of your fate, 
unveiling concealed truths and presenting fresh pathways to seize new opportunities. The parable of the prodigal son, Luke 15 verses 11 to 32, there lived a wealthy man with two sons. The younger son, feeling restless and eager for adventure, approached his father one day and asked for his share of the inheritance. Surprisingly, the father agreed, and the younger son set off to explore the world, squandering his wealth on extravagant living. As time passed, a severe famine struck the land, and the young man found himself destitute and hungry. Desperate and ashamed, he decided to return home to his father, hoping to find mercy even as a hired servant. While he was still far off, his father saw him coming and ran to embrace him with open arms. Overwhelmed with love and compassion, the father welcomed his lost son back home, ordering a feast to celebrate his return. Meanwhile, the elder son, who had remained faithful and hardworking, grew resentful at the lavish welcome his younger brother received. When he questioned his father's decision, the father explained that they must rejoice because his lost son had been found, and it was time to celebrate his return. In this parable, Jesus illustrates the boundless love and forgiveness of God, who eagerly awaits the return of those who have strayed. It teaches us about the importance of repentance, forgiveness, and the joy that comes from reconciliation. Just as the father in the story welcomed back his prodigal son with open arms, so too does God welcome back all who come to him with a repentant heart. The story of David and Goliath, 1 Samuel 17, in ancient Israel, there arose a great conflict between the Israelites and the Philistines. The Philistines, formidable warriors, gathered their armies for battle, encamping on one hill, while the Israelites assembled on the opposite hill, with a valley between them. Among the Philistines stood a giant named Goliath, a champion who challenged the Israelites to send forth a champion to fight him in single combat. Goliath's stature was immense, and his armor was formidable. His challenge struck fear into the hearts of the Israelites, who trembled at the thought of facing him. Meanwhile, in the Israelite camp, a young shepherd named David arrived to bring provisions for his older brothers who was serving in the army. When David heard Goliath's taunts and saw the fear in his fellow Israelites, he volunteered to face the giant. King Saul, astonished at David's bravery, tried to dissuade him, but David insisted, declaring that he had faced dangers while tending his father's sheep and had defeated both lions and bears. Trusting in the Lord's protection, David refused to wear Saul's armor and instead chose five smooth stones from a nearby stream, placing them in his shepherd's bag and taking his sling in hand. As Goliath approached, mocking and cursing David, the young shepherd ran toward him, slinging a stone that struck the giant in the forehead. Goliath fell to the ground, and David, seizing Goliath's own sword, killed him, thereby defeating the Philistine champion. The Israelites, emboldened by David's victory, surged forward, pursuing and defeating the Philistines, who fled in terror. David's triumph over Goliath became a symbol of courage, faith, and divine intervention, reminding the Israelites of God's power to deliver them from their enemies. The Trials of Job, Book of Job, in the land of Uzi lived a man named Job. He was blameless, upright, and God-fearing, with great wealth and a large family. But one day, Satan approached God, suggesting that Job's righteousness was only because of his blessings. Satan proposed to test Job's faith by taking away everything he had. God allowed Satan to afflict Job, but not to harm him physically. In a single day, messengers brought Job a series of devastating news. Raiders stole his livestock. A fire consumed his sheep. The Chaldeans took his camels and a mighty wind collapsed the house where his children were feasting, killing them all. Despite his immense grief and loss, Job did not curse God. Instead, he tore his robe, shaved his head, and fell to the ground in worship, saying, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, 
and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Satan, unsatisfied, suggested that Job would curse God if he suffered physically. God granted Satan permission to afflict Job's body, but not to kill him. Job was afflicted with painful sores from head to toe, yet he still did not curse God. Job's friends came to comfort him, but ended up arguing that his suffering was a result of sin. Job defended his innocence, expressing his confusion and despair. He longed for an audience with God to plead his case and understand why he was suffering so greatly. Finally, God responded to Job out of a whirlwind, questioning Job's understanding of the universe and reminding him of God's sovereign power and wisdom. Job humbly acknowledged God's greatness, saying, I know that you can do all things, and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. In the end, God restored Job's fortunes twofold, blessing him with more wealth and a new family. Job's story teaches lessons about faith, perseverance, and the mystery of God's ways, showing that even in the midst of suffering, trust in God can lead to eventual restoration and redemption. The Conversion of Saul, Acts 9 verses 1 to 19, Saul, also known as Paul, was a zealous Pharisee who fiercely persecuted the followers of Jesus, considering them a threat to Judaism. He obtained letters from the high priest in Jerusalem authorizing him to arrest any believers in Damascus and bring them back to Jerusalem for punishment. As Saul traveled to Damascus with his companions, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him and he fell to the ground. He heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Trembling and astonished, Saul asked, Who are you, Lord? The voice replied, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. When Saul got up from the ground, he realized he was blind. His companions led him into Damascus, where he stayed at a house on Straight Street. Meanwhile, the Lord appeared in a vision to a disciple named Ananias in Damascus and instructed him to go to Saul and restore his sight. Ananias was hesitant because he had heard of Saul's reputation, but the Lord assured him that Saul was chosen to carry the name of Jesus to the Gentiles, kings, and Israelites. Ananias obeyed the Lord and went to the house where Saul was staying. He laid his hands on Saul, saying, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He was baptized eight and regained his strength. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus preaching boldly in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. Those who heard him were amazed and said, Isn't he the man who raised havoc in Jerusalem among those who call on this name? And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priests? But Saul grew more and more powerful, confounding the Jews living in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Messiah. His dramatic conversion marked the beginning of his journey as one of the most influential apostles of Christianity, spreading the gospel message throughout the known world. The Healing of the Blind Man by Jesus John 9 verses 1 to 12 in this story, Jesus encounters a man who had been blind from birth. His disciples assumed that the man's condition was a result of sin, either his own or his parents. However, Jesus corrects this misconception, explaining that the man's blindness was an opportunity for God's work to be revealed. The moral of this story lies in Jesus' response to the blind man's condition. Instead of assigning blame or judgment, Jesus sees an opportunity to demonstrate God's power and compassion. He heals the blind man, not only restoring his physical sight, but also revealing the spiritual blindness of those who cannot see beyond their preconceived notions. This story teaches us the importance of compassion, understanding, and seeing beyond outward appearances. It reminds us that everyone deserves love, respect, and the opportunity to be seen for who they truly are, 
regardless of their circumstances. The triumphal entry into Jerusalem, Matthew 21 verses 1 to 11 in this story, Jesus enters Jerusalem amidst great fanfare and celebration. The people welcome him with shouts of, Hosanna! and lay down their cloaks and palm branches as he rides into the city on a donkey. This event, known as the triumphal entry, fulfills prophecy and marks Jesus' acknowledgement as the long-awaited Messiah. The moral of this story is twofold. First, it highlights the fulfillment of God's promises and the recognition of Jesus as the Savior. The people's enthusiastic response symbolizes their hope and faith in Jesus as the one who will bring salvation and deliverance. Second, the triumphal entry foreshadows the events to come, including Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection. Despite the jubilant atmosphere, Jesus knows the ultimate purpose of his mission and willingly proceeds toward his sacrificial death for the redemption of humanity. This story reminds us of the importance of recognizing Jesus as our Savior and King. It calls us to welcome Him into our lives with joy and celebration, acknowledging His authority and surrendering to His divine plan for our salvation. The Father declares today that a startling revelation awaits you, brought about by your recent actions. Your world is shaped by the words of God that I have placed within you. Throughout history, I have transmitted my words to various cultures and languages, even to this present moment. Seize the opportunity one have granted you to access my word, which is alive and active, unlike mere written text. Embrace the living essence of my word, which others may perceive as merely ancient stories or human invention. Allow my word to permeate your being, becoming a vibrant reality within you. When you speak my word, you invite my presence into every situation. Through your declaration of my word, seemingly ordinary materials like paper and leather become conduits for transformation from bondage to breakthrough. Rekindle your love for my word today. Reject any attempts by others to interpret my word for you. Cultivate a personal and intimate relationship with my word once more. Just as I exalt my word above all else, I urge you to adorn yourself with my words afresh. By doing so, my word will manifest as tangible fulfillment and assurance in your life. My child, there arrives a moment in the journey of each soul, a crossroads where a choice must be made. A choice that echoes through the chambers of eternity, reverberating in the hallowed corridors of destiny. My cherished children, there lies before you two divergent paths, one that whispers of surrender to the perceived limitations, and another that beckons you to rise, to stand tall, and to declare your divine birthright. It is a pivotal juncture where the frailty of human doubts and worldly whispers may tempt you to retreat. The world, in its finite understanding, may murmur tales of inadequacy, lack of skill, knowledge, resources, or even the audacity to dream beyond the ordinary. Yet, within this cosmic symphony, a choice awaits one that transcends the mundane narratives and propels you towards the celestial realm of your true potential. 
My beloved children, in your mortal guise, you may encounter moments when the weight of the world seems insurmountable. There, in the crucible of life, where hardships unfold, you may be tempted to bow before the illusions of mediocrity. But I beseech you to grasp the other option, the divine spark within you that yearns for more, that yearns to break free from the shackles of self-imposed limitations. It is a sacred commitment, a covenant with your dreams, your goals, and the visionary tapestry of your future. Do not succumb to the whispers that weave tales of inadequacy, for within you resides the power to manifest your destiny. Look beyond the horizon of the present, for it is you who must decide to embark on the journey, to transcend the comfort of the known, and to tread the path less traveled. In the sacred realm of creation, many refrain from exceeding the boundaries set by societal expectations, opinions, or the doubts of others. Yet, I implore you, my beloved, do not confine your aspirations to the echoes of external voices. As you confront the hardships, the rejections, and the trials, remember this, your dreams are not subject to the consensus of the world. It is within your sacred chamber of resolve that the symphony of your destiny is composed. For those among you who have weathered storms of adversity, let not the flame of your dreams flicker. Recall the resilience within you, the unwavering commitment that says, no matter how bad it is or how bad it gets, I shall make it. Do not yield to the naysayers, for their vision is finite, while yours has the potential to touch the infinite. As you tread the path less chosen, many may question your sanity, your choices, and your audacity to dream beyond the confines of the ordinary. Yet, my children, understand that uncommon destinies are not forged by the common souls. In the crucible of life, your commitment to greatness, your unwavering belief in your potential, shall be the hammer that shapes the sword of your victory. In the grand tapestry of creation, I urge you to silence the noise, to shut out the opinions, and to embrace the fact that not everyone will comprehend your sacred journey. Do not let the judgments of others determine your worth or the magnitude of your capabilities. You are crafting a symphony of your own, and its melody need not align with the perceptions of the world. When the shadows of doubt attempt to shroud your brilliance, engage in a dialogue with your inner self. Challenge the voices that undermine your worth and declare them liars. You are stronger than the challenges, more resilient than the adversities. With every step forward, you announce to the universe, it's possible, and I am the one to manifest it. My divine warriors, the external circumstances do not define you. Your consciousness shapes the reality you experience. Do not be confined by the present circumstances, for they are but a fleeting reflection of your past choices. If adversity has marked your journey, know that it is a canvas awaiting the brushstrokes of your transformation. As you face the storms, do not be worn down by them. Instead, allow them to refine you, to shape you into a resilient weapon capable of conquering any mission that obstructs your path to victory. Speak to your reflection in the mirror daily and affirm, I am proud of you. I believe in you. You can overcome anything. You are powerful. In the cosmic dance of life, there are those who yearn to be beasts, not in ferocity, but in their ability to navigate through the infernos of existence and emerge with gratitude for the very legs that carry them. A beast is one who, having lost everything, finds gratitude in the opportunity to rebuild. It is an entity that hits rock bottom and exclaims, Roger that. I shall harness this experience, for it is only up from here. In the realm of divine warriors, setbacks are not seen as deterrents, but as opportunities for resurgence. The essence of a beast lies in its ability to endure hell, yet be grateful for the chance to ascend again. It acknowledges that life is impermanent, and in that impermanence, it discovers the strength to rebuild, regenerate, and emerge even stronger. My divine children, as you traverse the realms of existence, do not be shackled by the opinions of those who do not comprehend the grandeur of your dreams. Do not allow the judgments of others to deny you a life that can script history. Recognize that opinions are plentiful, but your destiny is singular. The orchestra of your life is composed not by the external symphony, but by the resonance of your inner commitment. Stand resolute in your journey, my beloved, for in your commitment lies the key to unlocking the boundless potentials within you. When the world attempts to confine you, remember, you are not of the world. You are a divine being with the power to transcend and transform. My divine warriors, the world may not understand your quest, your dreams, your purpose, 
but it is not for the world to comprehend. It is for you to embark upon this sacred journey, to declare your commitment with unwavering resolve. Even when faced with doubt, opposition, or rejection, stand firm, for you are crafting a destiny that transcends the ordinary. In the divine theater of existence, your commitment to your dreams, your unyielding belief in your potential, and your ability to endure hardships shall be the script that unravels the epic tale of your triumph. As you face adversity, remember that it is not designed to break you, but to shape you into a beacon of resilience, a testament to the unwavering spirit within. Speak to the universe with the language of your actions, my beloved. Rise above the cacophony of doubt, embrace the symphony of your commitment, and let the resounding echoes of your journey create a melody that inspires generations. You are not merely enduring life, you are sculpting your destiny with the chisel of your choices. The power to transform, to succeed, to overcome, resides within you and you alone. Acknowledge this truth, for when you do, nothing in the cosmos can deny you the greatness that awaits. The circumstances of today are but a fleeting illusion. Your commitment, your actions, your beliefs, these are the eternal threads that weave the fabric of your destiny. In the divine embrace of your purpose, know that you are crafting a masterpiece, a narrative that transcends the limitations of worldly perspectives. When the chorus of doubt attempts to overshadow your symphony, remember the divine words echoing through the cosmos. No matter how bad it is, or how bad it gets, you shall make it. As you traverse the sacred corridors of your journey, do not merely exist thrive, for your destiny is an unfolding epic, and you are the protagonist. The universe awaits the crescendo of your commitment, the divine melody of your resilience. You are not a victim of circumstance, you are a sculptor of destinies, a bearer of divine potential. In the grand tapestry of creation, you are the brushstroke that paints the canvas of your reality. Stand tall, my divine children, for you are the architects of your fate, the composers of your symphony, and the warriors destined for greatness. In every challenge, see the opportunity to ascend. In every setback, recognize the invitation to rise stronger. As you face the trials and tribulations, declare within your soul, I am the one. I am the architect of my destiny. No external circumstance, no judgment, no rejection shall deter me from the sacred journey I have undertaken. In this proclamation, my beloved, lies the alchemy that transforms adversity into triumph. Embrace your divine birthright, for within you resides the power to transmute challenges into stepping stones, obstacles into opportunities. You are not a victim, you are a victor. Do not succumb to the whispers of doubt, for you are crafting a legacy that echoes through the corridors of eternity. My divine warriors, confront every trial with the unwavering belief that you are stronger than any adversity, more resilient than any challenge. With each stride, with each commitment, declare to the universe, I am the one who shapes my destiny. I am the one who perseveres. I am the one who, against all odds, emerges victorious. In the sacred dance of life, heed the call of your divine potential. Do not be confined by the expectations of others, for your journey is a sacred covenant between your soul and the cosmos. The orchestration of your destiny lies within your commitment, your resilience, and your unwavering belief in the limitless power within. And so, my beloved children, in the grand theater of existence, let your commitment be the resounding chorus that reverberates through the cosmos. Rise with the certainty that you are the maestro of your destiny, the architect of your triumph, and the bearer of a divine legacy that transcends the ephemeral illusions of this earthly realm. In the divine embrace of your purpose, go forth with the knowledge that no external circumstance, no judgment, no rejection, can extinguish the flame of your commitment. The symphony of your destiny awaits the crescendo of your unwavering resolve. Stand firm, for you are not alone. The cosmos, in all its splendor, applauds the divine journey you have undertaken. In every adversity, find the opportunity to demonstrate the strength within. In every challenge, discover the gateway to your greatness. Remember, my divine warriors, the fulfillment of your dreams lies within you and you alone. As you navigate the realms of existence, let your commitment be the guiding star that leads you to the shores of triumph. Embrace the divine truth that you are not subject to the consensus of the world. You are a sovereign soul with the power to shape your destiny. 
As you confront the storms, let them be the winds that propel you forward, the challenges that fortify your spirit. In every setback, recognize the invitation to rise stronger, to emerge as the hero of your own epic. My cherished children, know that you are not mere mortals navigating the twists and turns of life. You are divine beings, and within you resides the infinite power to manifest your dreams. Do not be shackled by the opinions of those who cannot fathom the grandeur of your aspirations. As you traverse the sacred landscapes of your existence, remember this divine truth. The circumstances of today are but fleeting shadows. Your commitment, your actions, your beliefs, these are the eternal forces that shape the grand narrative of your destiny. Stand tall, for you are not victims of circumstance. You are architects of divine destinies. In the sacred communion of your purpose, let your commitment be the anthem that echoes through the ages. You are not here to merely endure life. You are here to sculpt your destiny with the chisel of your choices. In every challenge, perceive the opportunity to unveil your strength. In every trial, witness the alchemy that transforms adversity into triumph. As you navigate the realms of existence, be steadfast in your commitment, resolute in your beliefs. Let not the judgments of others determine your worth, for your destiny is a sacred covenant between your soul and the cosmos. In the grand theater of creation, you are both the playwright and the protagonist. My divine warriors, let the symphony of your commitment drown out the cacophony of doubt. Rise above the opinions of those who cannot fathom the grandeur of your dreams. In every setback, recognize the divine invitation to rise stronger, to emerge as the victorious hero of your sacred journey. In the cosmic dance of life, declare to the universe, I am the one who shapes my destiny. I am the one who perseveres. I am the one who, against all odds, emerges victorious. As you confront the trials and tribulations, let this be your sacred mantra, resonating through the corridors of eternity. And so, my beloved children, go forth with the unwavering certainty that you are not bound by the limitations of the world. Your commitment is the key that unlocks the portals to your divine potential. As you tread the path less chosen, let your actions be the brushstrokes that paint the masterpiece of your destiny. In the sacred tapestry of creation, you are the weaver of dreams, the sculptor of destinies. Stand tall, for you are not alone. The cosmos, in all its majesty, aligns with the symphony of your commitment. With every stride, with every choice, you are shaping a legacy that transcends the boundaries of time. In the divine embrace of your purpose, recognize the profound truth, your commitment, your resilience, your unwavering belief in the infinite power within these are the forces that determine the grandeur of your destiny. Embrace the sacred journey that unfolds before you, for you are not mere mortals. You are divine architects of a reality that echoes through the corridors of eternity. In every challenge, discern the opportunity to unveil your strength. In every adversity, witness the alchemy that transforms the mundane into the extraordinary. My divine warriors, go forth with the knowledge that you are not victims of circumstance. You are victors shaping the narrative of your triumph. My child, if I should ask you, are you walking in faith? Are you walking by sight? How would you answer that? Do you walk according my will, purpose and plan? Or are you just walking, trusting and hoping things will turn out? I want you to walk, trusting me for every single thing. And that is, walk by faith. You either walk by faith or by sight. Sometime you've got to see it to believe it, and you have such moments in your life. Your decisions really matter. When you want to hear my voice, or receive some definite sign from me regarding a relationship, perhaps a pending marriage, a business decision, a career choice, or a major expenditure, you know your decisions really matter. You make decisions, your decisions turn around and make you, and you face so many questions throughout all of your lifetime. Like, how about should I get married? If the answer is yes, who should I marry? Should I go to college? I've got a good job. Shall I take the new job? Should I just hold on to the one I have? Is there any way to be 100% certain about my will when you're making a major choice in life or a college? But remember, you walk by faith, not by sight. You walk by faith. And I want to say to you, you are not going to get 100% assurance and confidence before you make a choice 
because it would require zero faith. You pray about it, you wait on me, and then you make our choice. You believe what you don't see. That's what faith is. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Once you see, then you don't need faith anymore. Faith means you have it in your heart before you have it in your circumstance. But it really can be just as good as having it if you really trust and believe me. You have to take the plunge. You have to make the choice. Go ahead and make the best decision you can make. And when you've done that, leave the results to me because my purpose will stand. And if yours are not, I will correct it. I will redeem it and I will still keep you on the right path to your future destiny and will not forsake you. I want you to know my will more than you want to know it. One of the reasons that people live out of the divine will is they're not willing to take the first step. I hear people tell this all the time. Well, God doesn't speak to me. Yes, I does. You may not be listening, but I do. I don't play favorites. I love you all, but sometimes I'll require of you something that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. If you're going to follow the Lord, you've got to be willing to listen to me, and you've got to be willing to trust me when you don't understand it. You may have some things you don't understand, you can't figure out, you don't see the answer. That's okay, you don't have to see it. This is a key to faith, trusting when you don't understand, trusting when you don't have the answers, trusting when it seems like just the opposite of what you were hoping for. Quit worrying about those things you can't figure out. I view you in the palm of my hand. You may not know how this is going to work out, but you do know who's on the throne. You do know who's directing your steps. You do know who's planned out your days. Before you were ever born, I've pondered plans I had for you before. There was even a single day to your existence, and I established your purpose before you were ever created in your mother's womb. They were actually recorded or written in my book. I have plans for you. I have some plans, plural ones. I know the plans I have for you. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and to give you a hope. So, I have great plans for you. I promise that my plans for your destiny are only good ones. No disasters are planned for you. I haven't written down on this occasion when they're 35, 40 years old. I'm going to get them. None of that. You are not God. That, no. My plans are only good, and they're only filled with grace and hope. You're not God. I am. It is really comforting to know. You know there is a God, and it isn't me. And that's why you must hanging on to me, and trust me. What happens is that you forget that I am in control of the life I gave you. You do want to make good choices, but you're a limited human being. You can't see the future, but I can. You've got scripture, you've got prayer, you've got wise people, and then you've got a peace in your heart. And at the end of the day, you have to trust me, and you have to believe regardless of what happens. You don't have to obsess, hyperventilate, or control everyone and everything around you. You don't have to worry about the minutia, the little miniature things of life. You can have confidence that your father is going to take care of everything. You know you can sleep well once you realize I'm in control of your life. You must know no human being energized by Satan, not even Satan himself, can stop my purpose for your life or mine. Even if you trust me and make a mistake, if you genuinely make a mistake, I have the most awesome ways of correcting that mistake. I know your heart. I know you're willing to do or what I requires of you. But the question is, are you listening? And secondly, are you trusting that whatever I say for you to do, that you're to do? Remember Abraham, he made some wrong choices, but I didn't stop blessing him. I didn't cast him aside. I knew that my finest children would make mistakes. They would sin against me. They would disobey me because living in the world in which you live in, that you make mistakes, the times of weakness, the times of failure, and I forgive, and I keep moving you. 
I can put you exactly where I want you to be. I can arrange all the details of your life years in advance. I can open doors that seem shut tight. I can remove any obstacle that stands in your way. I can take your choices and fit them into my plan so you end up at the right place at the right time. I can even take your mistakes and bring good out of them. Don't forget, I'm your redeemer. I redeems things. I can take tragedy, use it for your good and my glory. All I need is a willing heart, just someone to reasonably cooperate. This doesn't mean you won't have to make difficult and hard choices. You will, but it takes the pressure off because it means you can trust me to take your decisions, your choices, and use them to accomplish my will in your life. Here comes the message Father is talking about, and after that, a prayer and some divine wisdom to save yourself from any unforeseen event. My beloved child, you will overcome, and all will witness that I am with you. Your blessing is on its way, and nothing shall hinder it. Soon you shall receive the answer you seek, your needs shall be met, and your health restored. The one you love will return to your life. I'm telling you this to fill you with courage. Let your joy begin today, for people and loved ones will come seeking you. I want them to see your joyful and rejuvenated face. Let your smile impact them, and let them witness the wonderful blessing I'm about to bestow upon you. My word has been given, and abundance is declared. I do not lie, and what I promise, I shall fulfill without fail. Always remember this to keep anxiety and worry at bay. I myself will put an end to your suffering, for your time has come. Days of happiness and delightful moments are on the horizon, and you must cherish them. Do not fear, my child. Do not cry and do not despair. Believe in me for I am the God speaking to you today. Believe it with all your soul, for I hear your pleas. Feel the beat of your humble heart, and your prayers resonate in my throne. The gates of my grace open for you, and I shall pour my blessings and favor upon you. My presence dwells with those of simple faith, with those of humble hearts, and with all who sincerely and earnestly invoke my name, Always remember that you can trust in my power and my faithfulness. I will never forsake you, nor will I forget you as the years pass. When enemies and troubles assail you, or when you feel weak, needy and unwell, I am with you at all times. I repeat this to you always so that you do not forget. I long for you to seek me every day, to remember my words, for I have the power to deliver you. When I say it every day, it is because I will truly do it, and I want you to have faith, to go to sleep in peace, and to wake up in the morning with a joyful spirit, and the confidence that my promise is unbreakable. I do not lie, I love you, and I will always bless you. So it was, so it is, and so it shall be. Tell me now that you believe. I want to see in your words, your strength and happiness. You are on the verge of receiving that long awaited blessing and that's why the enemy has come with all their fury, trying to pull you away from my side. If things are not going as you expected, it's not a reason to become angry and throw in the towel. Today, I understand how you feel. Look at me, and we will sort things out. Do not distance yourself from me. Do not hide. How could you ever think that I am not real? Where did you get the idea that I cannot love you? Why do you underestimate yourself so much? No trial or difficulty in your life escapes my notice today. I am not pacing before the throne, wondering what I will do with you or how to bring you through. You really are not that great a challenge, says the father. You didn't actually think I would be intimidated or daunted by the mountains standing in your way, did you? I am the God of the universe, 
and I live inside you. Do not allow the enemy to make you think or lead you to believe that what you are enduring is somehow unique or in some way worse than what any other person may be facing. That is self-pity and self-absorption, seeking to get your eyes off of my faithfulness. In my earth walk, I endured and was touched by what you are feeling right now. I suffered and I did not sin, so that you could withstand likewise and remain in obedience to the heavenly vision of all that I have promised. Look in expectation to what I am about to do on your behalf. I always come through on time and on target to address what pains you most and hold you captive. I am releasing you from your captivity this day. This is heaven come to earth time for you today. This is the hour that changes the world and the hour that changes your world. What are you waiting for? Go ahead and dance in advance. Go ahead and rejoice. I will be found faithful in your life. You will look back and see and look back and declare what else could have possibly gone right. This is not fantasy. This is not an incredulous, unlikely possibility. This is the rock-solid affirmation of my word and my promise that endures forever and puts you over in every circumstance. You are not a victim. You are a principality and a power, wearing this day the very crown that you will one day lay at my feet in triumph. You've made me weep with your thoughts. I also have a heart that feels. Indeed, I love you. I don't want you to ever leave my side. When you were sunk in depression and despair, when you thought your final day had come, it wasn't you who sought me first. I came to where you were and took you in my arms with so much affection. Cleanse your soul and your heart, for I have forgiven all your faults. I comforted you, healed you and stood you up. You walked once more, you were reborn. Pay attention now, for at this moment, you will understand that my promise is firm, unbreakable. No one can snatch you from my hand. My love is eternal. If you are filled with doubts, it's because you're believing in someone else. But look, let's forget about that. Come into my arms now, you're making me cry too. You move me so much when I see you running towards me. Life is like this. Struggles will come, doubts may persist, but they are like birds circling your head. And if you're not careful, they will enter and build nests in your mind, filling your thoughts with confusion, disconnecting you from my love, making you forget the beautiful moments you've experienced by my side causing you to focus only on the hardships you faced. Do not allow these thoughts to enter. Reject the ideas of death that the enemy wants to plant. Let me remove those doubts from your mind. You will come out of the sadness you feel right now. I am writing my name on your heart, so you will never forget or doubt that all my love is yours. I will not fail you. I give you my word. Even if the world turns against you and you look everywhere without finding a helping hand, no matter what happens, I will stay by your side. I will protect your family. I will protect you and the blessings and gifts I have sent you. But tell me now, what will you do on your part? Will you trust and hold fast to my word, regardless of what you see or feel? I assure you, and I repeat, I will not fail you. I declare this solemnly, my promises are not in vain. So walk hand in hand with me, with a tranquil heart, in peace and confidence. My covenant with you will be forever unbreakable. I know that the busyness of life sometimes leads you to set me aside. That's why I ask you that, when the silence comes and the noise fades, and you find yourself free and available to talk with me. A minute in my presence is better than a thousand hours in this world of pain. 
Come, for I will be there to listen to your prayers. Remember, you can find the peace your spirit longs for through your beautiful and tender faith in my word. You already know that if I say it, I will do it. If it is written, my promises are more solid and powerful than anything else in this world. You love me, you give me your heart, you feed on my word, and you believe with all your soul. I am pleased with your attitude and your dedication. There I will reward you. I am giving you the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions, upon burning coals, and any path filled with thorns of pain. You have the gift to shut the mouths of lions and to stop the destroyer's devastation. You do not need much noise or exaggerated shouting for my power to manifest. Your simple faith, your grateful soul, your obedient attitude and your brave warrior's gaze are sufficient. The enemy is not frightened when people raise their voices and declare my word, but they do it without faith. They speak and shout, claim to love me, but of their gatherings, they point fingers, judge and criticize, and thus no miracle can I perform. I have chosen to use you and work miracles through your lips and your hands. Let nothing deter you, do not cower in the face of any obstacle. In my love and power, you will leap over walls and overcome the evil armies. In those days when loneliness envelops you and tears become your solace, come to me. I understand your suffering, sadness and desolation. You do not need to explain anything, just cry out my name and I will lighten your burdens. I know how much love and attention you have given and how little has been received in return. They lied to you, betrayed you, did not consider your efforts, and did not value you. Know that I have seen everything you have been through, and I understand you perfectly. I understand what you feel, and what you have had to endure to reach this point. I have always been, am, and will be with you. But from today onward, your faith is reborn, and your eyes open to a new life, where you finally feel and believe in my love. This is my promise. Give me your life and your heart, and I will be with you to love and heal your pain. I will be your shield in every battle, surround you with my affection, and give you unshakable peace to strengthen your soul. If you fall, you will rise. If you become discouraged, I will infuse your spirit with strength. No one and nothing can sow fear in your mind. Let no accusations or lies disturb you. Do not allow ill-intentioned people to see you fall. Trust only in me, for I know your noble heart, and you will see how your enemies flee in terror. You will witness your life filling with peace, wisdom, prosperity, health, and holy joy, thanks to the blessings that come from above, covering you completely. By my side, all your dreams will be possible. You will feel my presence within you, and you will never be the same person again. Everyone around you will notice the joy and peace radiating from your face. Come tomorrow, rise early, pay attention, and very clearly, you will hear my voice, reminding you that I will never fail you, for I love you with all my heart, whether you are doing well or facing challenges. I am sending you this message of tranquility because I heard you say today that you needed peace. I am breathing divine strength into your soul and you can feel the serenity filling you at this very moment. Just open your lips in a prayer of gratitude. This is the most beautiful prayer you can offer. Do not feel bad. I hear you perfectly. My response was sent before you even called. But I want you to exercise your faith, not always relying on your strength, even though you are very intelligent. Do not make yourself dependent solely on your prudence. Be wise and humble, 
for you do not know everything. Dangers and snares lurk in the darkness around you, like a roaring lion in the spiritual world. Pay attention, take it seriously. I hope you understand me well. When you come to listen to me, you will feel my Holy Spirit embracing you, and I will not let you go until I sense your heart calming down. I will not allow you to walk the paths of life filled with fear and despair. I will knock on the door of your soul every morning, for I want you to rise early when everyone in your house is asleep. There, in your room, on your knees, in silence, start your day with active faith. Come with confidence, I am waiting for you with open arms. Leave your thoughts and reflections in the comments below, we'd love to hear from you. Until next time, may love and transformation fill your days. Curious to discover more life-changing insights like these? Then dive right into our next video. It's a journey you won't want to miss. Click on the video and let's keep the universal's wisdom flowing.